السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah alone, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is His last messenger. Dear viewers everywhere and uh, dear beloved guests here in the studio, welcome to a new episode of Islam Unveiled. In today's episode, inshallah, we'll tackle the last and the sixth article of faith, which Muslims must believe in. We said when uh, Angel Gabriel came to Prophet Muhammad and he inquired about the concept of Iman, what do Muslims believe in? What's your faith? He said, Al-Imanu, an tu'mina billahi, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wa liyawm al-akhiri, wa bilqadari, khayrihi, wa sharrih. To believe in Allah, His angels, His books, and His messengers, and in the last day. And the sixth article of faith was, and to believe in the preordainment of God, the divine destiny, and he said, خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ It's good and it's bad. The, the, the last segment which is good and it's bad has also some significance. But first of all, let's learn about what is the meaning of the preordainment and whether we do have control over our choices or we have no choice. Uh, how do we go about it? People are confused in this regard. Why? Because they don't have reference. But the believers are so certain with regards to this issue that fact number one, Allah the Almighty as He stated in the Quran that He created us with a free will. Humans and mankind have been given the free will which the heavens, the earth, the mountains, the sun, the moon, and the angels and other creatures refused to take this responsibility. And a free will means reward or punishment based on the person's choice. And also that Allah the Almighty did not give us the free will and He left us without guidance. No. As a matter of fact, He said, وَهَدَيْنَاهُ najdain." After he created mankind in the best stature, and he provided him with faculties of senses, and he gave him this intellect, and this mind in order to reflect and ponder, has guided him, has shown him the two paths, the two ways, the good, and he recommended for him to take it, and the bad, and he asked him to abstain from it. And furthermore, Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, it is Allah, the one who is the protector and the supporter of the believers. Allah amanu. He takes them out of darkness into light. The beauty of learning how to read and understand the Quran, and understand the Quran in Arabic would lie in verses like that. The word darkness, al-zulumat in Arabic is plural. While an-nur is singular. Because the wrong ways and paths are many and various, by, but the way of guidance is only one way. Which even though humans have been given the choice whether to believe or to disbelieve, to obey or to disobey, have been recommended to ask Allah the Almighty for guidance and seek His help and assistance in order to remain rightly guided and keep steadfast on the straight path. That's why even those who believe in Allah and do good righteous deeds and they do not associate any of them in worship, even the prophets on regular basis constantly every single day in every prayer 
we invoke Allah the Almighty by saying, guide us to the straight path. Why? Because, yes, we have the free will. We can make the choice on our own. And there will be obstacles and things to hinder us from following the straight way. Yet, by Allah's leave, by Allah's help and assistance, we manage to remain steadfast on the straight path. Prophet Tribe, one of the prophets of Allah, when he was preaching his people, he summarized and concluded his mission in a, in a simple phrase. He said, "In uridu illa al-islaha mastatat." I only want to fix you guys to make you be rightly guided. Yet, wama tawfiqi illa billah. My success is only with Allah. My success only comes from Allah. So what is the concept of Al-Qada wal qadr or the divine destiny or the preordainment as Allah wants us to believe in it? Fact number one, Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, in verse number 22 in a chapter which is known as Al-Hadid, this verse would explain to us what does Allah want from us to believe in concerning the preordainment. And accordingly, what will be our behavior in this life? He said, ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير. To many, that would be a big surprise. The verse means that there is no calamity that befalls on earth, nor in yourselves, you humans, but it was all inscribed in a book, in a preserved tablet with God, before we created it. Before we brought it into reality. What does it mean? There come the Prophet, peace be upon him, to explain to us that. 50,000 years before Allah created the heavens and earth, and obviously before our creation, he preordained everything that's going to happen on earth. Then he wrote it down in a book. This book is known as Al-Lawh Al-Mahfuz or the preserved tablet. He preserves this tablet or book beneath his throne. What's can, what's, what, what are the contents of this book? What's written in it? It is written in it the fate and the provision of every every creature of Allah the Almighty. When it will be created, when will it depart this life, and what will happen with or from this object, whether life or lifeless objects, throughout its life. As long as it's lasting in this life. Maybe it sounds and it seems a little complicated. In order to make it easy to understand and grasp the proper meaning of the preordainment, I want to give you an example. Now, while you're sitting in one place, you can see others who are thousands and thousands of miles away from you on television or chatting on the messenger or the webcam. Not only that, if you are good in Google Earth, you can see your house in Slovenia. And you can read the license plate of a car which is parking in front of your house. Others are more advanced and they have security cameras, such as those who have big brother. They can tell exactly what's going on in, in the house, in, in the closet, in the bathroom, with the security cameras. All of that have been invented and made by a human being with very limited uh, intellect compared to what Allah the Almighty has. He is the creator of everything. So when Allah the Almighty by His infinite knowledge knows what's going on with His creatures, it is not too much for Him. He is the all-knowing. He is well acquainted. So that is the meaning of in His infinite knowledge. He knew what will happen in the future. He knows the past, the present, and the future. And he doesn't have to wait for somebody to tell him what happened. 
because he's a creator and by his knowledge he's with every living creature and he knows exactly what they need what they do and what they plan in mind what they have concealed in their intentions as well this is how much Allah the Almighty is all knowing and well acquainted so the first stage in order to understand the concept of the preordainment that Allah has an infinite knowledge and Allah has recorded whatever is in his infinite knowledge in a book about what will happen in the future and that's so easy it is most easy for him then Allah created us and our actions are being done by his leave that's why nobody thinks that he or she could do anything against Allah's will. So where, where our will would fit in, here is a point. Allah the Almighty gave us a free will concerning only one thing. But concerning the rest of things, we have no choice, such as. No one had any choice whether he or she would like to come to this life or not. Do you guys recall that somebody consulting you whether you'd like to uh, be born or stay in the womb? Obviously not. No one was consulted whether he would like to be uh, he or she, male or female, uh, white or black, blonde hair or curly hair. Nobody was consulted in this regard. As a matter of fact, nobody was consulted with regards to richness and poverty. What happens to us concerning life and death and our provision our fixed term in this life that we have no choice with that regard whatsoever. So it gives us some sort of assurance that if you don't have choice, then you should settle and be happy with God's giving because it couldn't be better. Nor can you change it. When a beloved person dies, guess what? No one on earth could have extended in his life one single moment. So yes, we feel sorry for the death of our beloved ones. But we realize that everybody is taking turns. So we're going to succeed them. We're going to die. If you get in a car accident, there is no way that you could have stopped it. Because it was already preordained. When you lose your money in the stock market, you would not kill yourself. Because even if you're speaking to the jinn, or a fortune teller, or a promise, or a soothsayer, or if you have access somewhere, no way that you could have stopped it. Because it was going to happen. Whether good or bad. And the concept of good and bad is very interesting. It needs to be explained in details, but after the short break, only if you hang around, so please stay tuned. Subhanallah. the translation has been indirectly influenced with the Israeli narrative. We haven't faced any problems in our preparations. We can't call it uh, the uh, wise uh, Hajj. In Egypt you have a huge amount of initiative going on in terms of developing uh, qualifications in different parts of the system. Reading helps you um, gain knowledge but saving the net doesn't help you at all. They are all uh, welcome to uh, participate in the discussion and the debate about the development of qualifications. What types of books our children do or should read? Join me for further discussion of Focus Point. Huda, a light in every home. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back. Before the break, we're talking about we must believe in the preordainment that God, in His infinite knowledge, have known things before happening, before even those who do it have been created, before our creation, 50,000 years before that. But what about the phrase which says we gotta believe in the preordainment, it's good and it's bad. Does Allah the Almighty do anything that is bad? Obviously not. Allah is good and He is the source of goodness and righteousness. It may be bad from our perspective. 
Maybe you can take just one example. If any person missed his flight for a reason or another, maybe he had a flat tire, or the red light have taken longer than it used to, or or or, or supposed to, in this condition, the person will feel very sad that he missed the flight, right? Some people would even blame God for what happened. And some others say, you know, if I have just rushed a little bit, if I have left a little earlier, I could have caught the flight. No. No matter what you've done, you're not going to catch the flight. Because it has been, it has been preordained that you will not be on this flight. Why? First of all, to the person who missed the flight, or lost the money in the stock market, or lost a beloved person, to him or to her, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Obviously, as it appears, it's a bad thing. Let's focus on the person who lost the flight. He missed the flight, he returns home, and he's very upset, and uh, non-believers would cast the blame on God, and they will keep thinking about what if I could have done this or this or that. Then while he's watching the news, he knows that the same flight that he was supposed to be on it has crashed. And no survivors. Everybody died. This person will jump off seat and says, Thank you God, thank you God, you love me so much. You're a loving God. That is the same God that you've been blaming a few minutes ago. Why? Because after Allah just revealed to us once the wisdom behind bringing to us some calamities, some tests and trials. So the tests and trials which Allah the Almighty may test us with, which He has preordained in His infinite knowledge and recorded in writing and created, do not mean that Allah doesn't like us, but sometimes it is for our virtues. It's good for us, such as if we get sick. It is not necessarily a bad thing. For the believers, it's a good thing. Why? Because it erases some of their sins. It purifies them from some of their bad deeds. It brings them closer to Allah the Almighty. It gives them forgiveness, it gives them mercy, and so on. So in a sense, it's a, it's a good thing. So it may be bad from one perspective, from one angle, which you look at it, very narrow angle, but it may be best for you, and you don't know. And that's why we say, Allah knows best. No one knows about what Allah has ordained or preordained for us, but Him. No angel, no prophet, no righteous one, no anything about the unseen. And this is a very important concept of faith and belief in Islam. So Muslims do not go to fortune tellers in order to find out about what will happen to them in the future and whom will they get married to and what will happen if they invest here or there or travel here or there. All of that is fake because Allah the Almighty says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثَ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَادَ تَكْسِبُ غَدَ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتُ So settle down. It is only Allah the Almighty who has the knowledge of the Day of Judgment as when will it happen. And the rain, whether it will fall or not. Even though we have very accurate forecast, but sometimes we say uh, 80% shower tomorrow, and uh, heavy rain, and we're expecting one foot of rain, or 20 inches, or whatever, and all of a sudden it is sh sunshine, and there is not a single drop of rain, and sometimes it is opposite. So these are all forecasts based on, you know, um, experiments, based on visualizations of some facts, but the reality of what will happen in the future, whether the near or the far, only with Allah the Almighty. Similarly, the provision. Nobody knows His provision, but Allah knows the provision of everyone. Similarly, life and death. Life and death. No one knows when he or she will die and where. Many times, the physician will say to a cancer patient, you know what, I'm going to uh, stop giving you radiation or chemo because it is of no use. You better live the remaining days for, uh, you know, experience some joy and delight, eat what you wish because it's over. So they say it's over and the physician dies and the patient does not die. 
and he stays for a year or two. Healthy people just die all of a sudden. So it is not our expectation. It is his divine destiny which we must believe in. And no one has this knowledge but Allah, the Almighty. It will give us this virtue and this privilege which only the believers have to believe in the concept of the preordainment of God or the divine destiny. When we understand that once Prophet Muhammad got hold of his cousin, Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, and said, and he was a young boy, approximately 10 to 13 years old, and he said, oh young boy, you got to know that if the entire ummah, if all mankind gather together, if all the government agencies, intelligence, militaries, and armies gather together, to harm you with anything which Allah did not ordain for you, they will not be able to. They cannot, because it's not in your destiny. And if all mankind gather together to benefit you with anything which Allah did not destine for you, then you will not get it. Such as, you know, those um, very superpower countries, wouldn't they like to preserve the lives of their heroes, their presidents, to make them live forever? Yes, but they can't. Simply, their presidents, they get old, they get Alzheimer, they forget their names. Sometimes they act as children because it's a cycle, and they die. You cannot extend the life of anyone with one single moment, because it is over. So that is the concept of, and the fruit of believing in the divine destiny. Whatever happened was going to happen. You can never stop it. But it is worth of mentioning here that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that there is one beautiful mean that one can protect himself from harm with even if that has been preordained. Such as invoking Allah and seeking his protection. Prayer. Prayer would help or may help in protecting you from things which Allah have destined you to encounter. Why is that? Because simply it was also pre-planned that Allah the Almighty in His infinite knowledge said that this person was going to have a car accident. But if he invokes me for protection, I am going to protect him from this collision. So the preordainment was contingent on your dua. If you make this dua, if you make this prayer, you will be saved. Otherwise, you're going to encounter uh, this preordainment and nothing can stop it by Allah the Almighty. So if he stops it, it's according to his will. If he doesn't, once again, it's his preordainment. Bottom line, brothers and sisters, you got to know that we have no choice concerning anything in our lives except for one thing, which is our choice of the free will, whether to believe or to disbelieve, to obey or to disobey. And that's why we find most of mankind are being ungrateful to God. Why? Because they have been given the choice. And only those who choose to be rightly guided by the leave of Allah will receive salvation on the day of judgment. I see you having a question. What is it? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Abdi Mahdi from Kenya. I would like to ask, how does one's prayers change the divine decree? As I just said right now, the prayer here means invocation or supplication. That Allah the Almighty ordained for somebody anything to happen to him. Okay? And you keep invoking Allah the Almighty. So nothing is going to twist Allah's mind, God forbid, or change it because it's above all of that. Is free from any imperfection. He's unlike humans. But Allah the Almighty decreed that your prayer, your prayer while it is ascending, and His decree while it is descending, that Allah will enable your prayer to overcome the decree so that another decree which He has already preordained as well will prevail. The other decree could be protection or prevention. Uh, prevention or uh, uh, a good thing to happen to you that's based on his will a again. All of that to us is totally unknown. So that's why we're only encouraged to invoke Allah 
and seek his protection and ask him for his help and whatever Allah wills will definitely happen and take place and no one can stop it but him. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Khalid. I am from Bosnia and my question is the Quran says that some people are guided are guided by Allah and some of them are misleaded by him. So how can be accountability on the day of the, on the day of judgment if Allah is uh, only one who decide uh, who is guided and uh, who isn't? Very very important question and I promise this question needs hours in order to be explained because many people are confused in this regard. But in brief the Quran answered this question by saying that فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَيُؤْمِلْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whosoever wants to believe, let him believe. And whosoever wants to disbelieve, let him disbelieve. But in another verse, Allah the Almighty says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ That and whatever ye will, ye cannot do unless if Allah the Almighty allows it to happen. So, you can bring harmony to all of that by reflecting and pondering the meaning of those verses all together. If somebody willed and he chose to disbelieve, that's his choice, which he will be held accountable for. If somebody committed theft, did Allah order him to steal? No, it was his decision, it was his act. But this concept means that he did not do anything against Allah's will. No, Allah let him do it. Why? Because it is a part of the concept of the free will to allow you to do it. It doesn't mean that he likes it. It doesn't mean that he approves it. It doesn't mean that he uh, applauds it or he will reward you for it. No, he dislikes it. He disapproves it. And he will punish you for it. But he did not put a restriction against your misguidance. You chose to be misguided. He let you choose whatever you wanted in order to be accounted for it. That is the meaning of whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one. They have chosen guidance. So Allah facilitated guidance for them. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray because it was their choice. So Allah let them fulfill their wish also according to his will. And this is a component of the free will which Allah the Almighty uh, tested mankind with. May Allah the Almighty guide all of us to his straight path and keep us steadfast on that straight path until we receive salvation on the day of judgment brothers and sisters until next episode i leave you in peace wassalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa allah wallahu akbar ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. Glory be to Allah, all praise to Allah. There is no God but Allah. Allah is great. All power and might belong to Allah, the Most High, the Great.